I'm now joined by a toxicologist, uh, Dr. Gerard Verdur. Dr. Gerard, I appreciate your time this afternoon. Now, the issue around food poisoning is, is on the increase. Uh, what are the primary toxins responsible for the spike in the food poisoning cases, and why are children particularly vulnerable? Well, maybe I should start off with saying I told you so. I've been warning about this for years now that we see what we call street pesticides in the hands of foreign nationals and spotter shops on the streets. Like last week, I was out in Utenaik and I, I found foreign nationals and local people selling these street pesticides. And um, the ones that we refer to are mostly Aldicarp in Gauteng and in the Western Cape. We also find Turbifos. And then the newcomer to the market is what we call Diclofos. That is a liquid, unlike the other two, which are granular. And sometimes even methylmethylphos and diazonide. Now, what happens is that these chemicals are unlabeled, they are unregistered, they are not legal pesticides. If the police officer goes into these um, illegal migrants run puzzle shop in South Africa and they find these chemicals, why don't they arrest these people? If they arrest them, why don't they put them back, send them back to where they came from? What is going on here? This is a nightmare for South Africans. I feel sorry for you guys. This, it's a nightmare. It's a failure of governance. And when you look at it in all level of government, it's failed. Failure, catastrophic failure. All right, let's listen. Guys, that you saw in among the food stuff in spider shops or by the street vendors. And um, in many cases, the food stuff that you saw them buy from these spider shops are contaminated with, it, with these pesticides because there is not food security there. There's no separation between the food stuffs and between the pesticides. And you can imagine if that little bag of healthy car breaks open spills over the chippies or the cookies or the sweeties that the kiddies buy it, they are going to be contaminated and the children will consume them poison food without even knowing the, the, the food they eat on, contains a poison. It is also likely that when we see the massive surge in the um, so-called fumigants which are sold illegally by South Africans and by foreign nationals, that um, people in these other shops um, use them to sort of fumigate or spray these other shops against cockroaches because I know for a fact there's a pandemic outside of cockroaches and these chemicals don't sit on the food stuffs. Now, the question is, why the children? Mm. The children don't have money to go and buy the properly packed of, of biscuits or sweeties or candy or, or crunchy chips for that matter. So these vendors, informal vendors, they unfat the food stuff, they put them into a bowl or they put them into a little plastic bag or a little bucket, and then the children buy themselves a handful of biscuits or a couple of sweeties or a couple of um, crunchies, and those are the ones that normally carry the poisons. And when children eat them, um, it has to high consequence, and I'm horrified to learn over the last couple of months that we've got more than 50 deaths of the month. So more than 50 deaths. 50 deaths. I didn't know this. This is the public health emergency. This is serious. So the question is, when does it stop? It will only stop if the government takes serious action. I've been pleading for this for years now. And unfortunately, we now sit at a pandemic situation where not only children, but also adults fall ill. And in many cases, they simply die off before they get to medical care. And if they do get to medical care, they are so badly poisoned by these chemicals, which are exceptionally toxic, that even the doctors and the medical nurses and the hospitals can't resuscitate them because their central nervous system have collapsed. So I see it as a a real onslaught. And what you heard this afternoon on the channel, it's only about death, death, death. And this is to me one of the worst forms because um, it's not supposed to happen. It's not supposed to happen if we work with legally registered pesticides. We do get poison, but seldom if ever. But the street pesticides, every single week I get the reports, and the reports are becoming more heinous every single time. It's not only two or three, it's now 40, 50 children that either become very seriously ill and go to hospital or a bundle of them just dying off after they the food. So from my perspective, as a chemist and toxicologist, I have severe sympathy for that people. I also
such a poor journey to start the feet up and doing something about it because it's a serious situation for a nation. It comes us with a very dark picture. Yeah, it does paint a very dark future for you guys. It is a serious issue here. Failure. As you can see in that video, a lot of these um, South Africans are uh, since the deaths of six children in that township, different townships, they've been going and looting these parcel shops, foreign run parcel shop, and then banning these products from their shops. And you can look at that. That's actually very risky because you, you don't know what's in those products. Like they say, they have a lot of chemicals that are, like I said, they're carcinogenic, those chemicals. Um, you potentially putting yourself at risk, inhaling these smokes from these um, products that you're thinking you are doing a great thing uh, for your community, but you are actually destroying your health and also illegal to loot as well. So my advice is let the authorities deal with this and let the authorities deal with this and also be making sure that authority are accountable. You cannot have these uh, spaza shop not following the law and they're still trading. There must be some way of communicating with the public when these puzzle shops are being declared as non-compliant and also the officials cannot just walk into the shop and see these chemicals there and not actually report it to the police even you the citizen if you see these chemicals um you need to report to the police they are not meant to be there they are not meant to have these chemicals they are illegal chemicals okay now, a couple of questions that, that come from uh, from your comments there, Dr. Gerard. Uh, now, one of those issues seems to be that there's there's a focus on uh, call it contaminated foods or foodstuffs that that have that have expired, and and we've seen uh, various government officials going into into these spaza shops and other and other little outlets and, and pulling out the 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 expired foods. But what also seems to to be apparent is. The fact that these sponsor shops, which are normally maybe might be a, a two by one uh, space, so it's a very, very small. And in those shops, these individuals are, are selling uh, highly toxic uh, chemicals and are also selling foodstuffs. What, what are the regulations are around a mix of uh, highly toxic uh, chemicals or substances and foodstuffs? Uh, I can tell you for a start, that these chemicals that you see featuring in the the potential point of our children. I've read the first reports and all my suspicions are 100% on the dot. How far from what they found in the post-mortem analysis. These chemicals are all regulated, not only by Act Number 36 of 1947, which is under the but they're also regulated under Act Number 15 of 1973, which is the Department of Health. And they have to be registered. If not registered, you cannot sell. If you're not in the appropriate containers with a label, so he is actually talking about the act itself. It is the food stuff, cosmetic disinfectant act number 54 of 1972. They follow under this act and they must be registered by a registrar. Not anyone can have these products. These are chemicals. They are illegal if you haven't got a registration, if you haven't been provided with the registration to even have them with you. But these illegal migrants have been running around rampant with them. Now we have about 50 people dead. And of 50 of those dead, six, six that I know of from last, just about 10 days ago, we're children from between the age of four and eight. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Catastrophe. So if they're in an unlabeled package, you're not allowed to own it. 
And on top of that, if you want to sell them, you need to be licensed with what we call a Group 1B license by the Department of Health. Now, I can guarantee you that these informal vendors and most, well, all of the foreign nationals do not have those licenses. So they don't know what they're dealing with. They sell the stuff unlawfully. The children buy the stuff. Um, the parents often buy it and take it home because it's sold in many cases as a rat, mookie, or a rodenticide, which is not the right term because it's not a rodenticide. It's a needle rodenticide. Or they sell it in a small little spray bottle as a, as a cockroach humidum, which is not because it, at that stage it becomes an illegal foreign chemical. So this is the issue. So those people are not even allowed to have these things in, the, in their possession. And I heard recently from my one colleague who worked for the department that they went out and the police did not even arrest the people who were in possession of um, a totally banned pesticide substance. Now, I yeah, you have heard him say that. This is, is the next bit. In South Africa, police don't even arrest this, uh, these criminals who are running rampant with these chemicals. They don't arresting them. Like I said last time, I said either someone is really incompetent or there's an alleged corruption that's going on here. Both of these are bad. Incompetency that led to these deaths and alleged corruptions or failure to enforce the law. If you see our people with these chemicals that you know, their people must be registered to have them and you don't arrest them. What is this? What's going on in South Africa? What the heck? What the heck? The question is, why not? This continuous, continuous, continuous. I've been out with the departments of health and agriculture and SPCA and Metropolis and my own area and but, but is, it, is, is it the responsibility of the police? Is it the same? Is it the responsibility yes, of the police to, to be apprehending, not uh, not uh, city health department? Well, city health can go and investigate. The same as the agriculture department, the same as the Department of Health. So city health and department of agriculture can go and do inspection. But the power of arrest lies with the South African Police Service because the inspectors from the Department of Health and the inspectors from the Department of Agriculture do not have the mandate for the power of bells and rest. And when they take the police along with them, we expect the South African police to arrest the people who are in an unlawful position of a ban or a foreign chemical like that. And I must tell you that the Department of Agriculture and Department of Health Inspectors do the level best, but they fell on the ground. And we have to rely then on the police to make the arrest, to take those people into custody, to make sure they open a docket, and if they undocumented foreign nationals, I expect the government to expel them because I very often find in my area that these foreign nationals are undocumented. They don't even carry a passport for them. My question is how they get into the country. On top of that, they bring elderly people into the country, which we know one tenth of a teaspoon can kill an adult man like myself who weighs 81 kilograms. So this is our problem. Our inspectors do their best. We need to get the police to up their, their performance and to arrest the people and to put them behind bars and to impose the maximum penalty upon them. And if a foreign national will sell stuff in to our people, I would like to see them leave our country. Yeah, I agree. If they're foreign, they need to leave the country to send them back where they came from. And a lot of them, as you said, they are undocumented, meaning they're illegal. They don't even have passport, valid passport. How did they get to South Africa? Through the border, across the river. Hmm? Home affairs again, that dodgy home affairs, it's responsible. There's home affairs responsibility here as well. Those porous border, by the ANC for the past 30 years has led to this. And the GNU is not going to help this. We saw Leon Schreiber with his uh, um, porous policy that's not even strengthening the border. He's not even doing the mandate, what he's elected there to do. Because it was very clear from the last election what South African wanted. A very strong border that illegals must must be taken back to where they came from. Mabahambe still remain. I haven't seen them go anywhere. They're still there. 
It's still poisoning children now. Okay, now if they're not poisoning, they're standing there threatening police officers with machete on this panga and all of that stuff. How do you know if those people aren't even terrorists? How do they know? How would they tell those people aren't even terrorists? They don't even have passport. This is the failure. This is putting South Africans at risk. There's already deaths, 50 deaths related to this failure of chemical. How do they even import these chemicals? Because they're banned. See? See why I say your problem is leadership. The problem is not the illegal migrants that's running rampant. It's the leadership that allows this to happen in the first place. Okay? Only South African poor people are at the risk of being killed by this action. Now, how effective is current medical treatment for toxin ingestion in children and what improvements are needed in emergency responses? A few weeks ago, I spoke to one or two individuals to, to ask uh, about these issues. In fact, it was around about the time that the five little children lost their lives in, in, in Soweto. Um, and, and it seems that they, there is a, a lack of, of preparedness. Well, you must understand why, because these chemicals, like I said to you, they're all extremely toxic. And even if you're a, a well-qualified medical doctor or a nurse or a paramedic, and believe me, that's the African medical fraternity are all well-trained, they're well-qualified, they know how to treat them. I agree. Even the best doctors wouldn't be able to save you if you have actually been exposed to these chemicals. Some of these chemicals are used in warfare. They were using warfare, some of them. And I said these uh, deaths were 100% preventable. That's what I meant. They should not be seen anywhere. And officials say they keep chemicals and food. They shouldn't be there. Why are they there? Why are these chemicals there? Why aren't you reporting to them to the police? Why police are aren't they pressing charges? Ask yourself this question, South Africans. Okay? But the chemicals are so toxic, by the time the patient, whether adult or youth, gets to the doctor or nurse, it is virtually too late. If you don't get that person in your hands as a medical professional, within 15 minutes, and start administering the atropine sulfate and the active charcoal, your chance of getting the patient through the worst is very limited. And very often, there aren't ambulance service, or the people think they just got mild food poisons. Now, typical food poisoning is not like that. People seldom, if ever, die from food poisoning. The problem lies in the fact that even if our doctors and nurses are well qualified, and they have the antidotes available at the clinic or the hospital or the medical practice, by the time the patient gets there, that patient is on death door. And it is seldom if ever effective in picking a test state with the African sulfur because this, the central nervous system has fallen apart. So if you're lucky enough as a medical doctor or a nurse to get your patient within 15 minutes and the patient had vomited and you can then atrophonize the patient with the antidote and you can hydrate the person, your chance of resuscitating the person and getting the person to fully recover is very, very good. And again, I applaud our medical fraternity and I'm this blue writing, but it is very often too late by the time they get into a hospital to, to treat them because the central nervous system for that story. Now, now just your thoughts before, as we, as we wrap up this conversation, uh, Dr. Gerard, and that question is, how do we educate the children? Uh, or is it, is, it, is it the parents? Uh, obviously, I don't, I don't assume that many of these spaza shops are going to stop selling these uh, these, these products or stocking uh, these chemicals in the, in the next few months. Uh, we've, we've been tracking the story. Yeah, that's a problem even there. The, why don't they ask the authority? The media, they should actually ask this police officer in this province. 
why aren't actually arresting these people who are selling these chemicals? That's the question you need to ask the police. How many they have? How many illegal migrants have been arrested for selling these chemicals? These illegal chemicals. That's a question you need to ask the police, and you need to demand the answer on behalf of South Africans. That's the role of media. Role of media is just that. They. It's not up to them. It's about. It's up to South Africa. The law of South Africa. It's not about up to them, whether they stop or not. It's about the law of South Africa enforcement. Similar to these for, for for several months now. But we need to educate parents. We need to educate the children. What does that process look like for you? To me, I think it lies in the hands of the Department of Health. It also lies in the hands of the Department of Education, but also for that matter in the hands of people like myself who work with the public and advise the public is first of all, we need to put together the large of what these chemicals look like because they all have a particular look and feel. So show them the black rainbow or the grey rainbow or the brown rainbow, the spray bottle, or whatever the people sell them. Tell them these things are the ones causing the death. Do not buy any food stuff close to these events. And do not buy them at all and take them home because they are like an unlicensed rifle or firearm. They are going to kill you. And then advise our people, even though you don't have enough money, stay away from a place where people sell food stuff which are open, unwrapped, and not in the real packaging. And if you do buy any food stuff as a child or an adult or a youth, and you stop that packet or the parcel of that food is compromised, you must be very suspicious because we can't. In some of the cases that happened about a year or one ago, two months, that some of the chemicals were deliberately put into noodles for that matter. And to this day, we don't know why it happened. So we have to educate people by going visual, and especially channels like your own and radio channels in the in the local languages of people. We educate people, tell them when you see something like a little black rainbow in a small pot, or brown rainbow in a small pot, a little spray bottle with a pale yellowish liquid, stay away. That is going to kill you. And don't buy food which is not properly wrapped. It is better to save your money and eventually go to the shop and buy yourself a proper pack of biscuits which is properly wrapped or a proper food store because at least you know then that food is edible, that food is safe. But if you go to a spa shop and you buy unpacked foods which are not properly wrapped, you take your life into your own hands. And unfortunately, it kills people. I hate the idea. I've seen poor South Africans expiring because of this. So I think if we all take hands, and we all talk about this every day, and we get the education department and the Department of Health to go out on the last curve, and the health inspectors, and I work with agriculture department anywhere on this, and we educate everybody. At least if create the awareness, people will understand, because our people are not informed. Our people are not well educated about this. And also, we need to get people to understand that many of the spa shops are not safe because the food there is either expired, which is an issue because it can cause the normal food poisoning, but the food, from my perspective, is very often poisoned because of the fact that they harbor illegal chemicals or yeah. illegal pesticides in their food stores that contaminate the food and see what happens. We cannot go on by losing 50 children a week to pesticide poisoning. It is not acceptable. Yeah, I agree with the sentiment. Totally unacceptable. Yeah, I wanted to go to his video because he's an expert. I am a novice, uh, but I do have an interest in synthetic chemistry. I have a degree in pharmacy in pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical science, major in synthetic chem, and a physics degree as well. So that's why uh, this I go through these videos relating to uh, medicines and chemists, chemists, pharmaceutical science and chemists. It is me. It's my interest. Love it. Anyway, if you're new here and you're benefiting from this video, please consider subscribing. Press the like, the bell and the like button. And I'll see you next time. Have a lovely night. Bye.